Hey cuties, how are you doing? I hope that you are doing so well. So today's video is going to be a little different. I'm just going to be doing my nails and talking to you guys. More of like a chill video. So I'm just gonna get started doing my nails and I'm going to be using a face cam today, which I never do that. So we'll see how that goes. There might be a little bit of a learning curve with the editing, so excuse that. But let's just get into the set and I'll tell you more while I do my nails. And if I'm looking up here, constantly um it's because that's where my viewfinder is also excuse the fact that you can see my camera here i couldn't figure out a camera angle where you didn't see it so yeah anyway i'm gonna be working on this hand today i already took off my last set and today i want to try to do some junk nails my nails are looking kind of rough uh as usual but we can just ignore that and move on. So actually today I'm planning on using poly gel. So I'm gonna start off by putting on some sunscreen. I like to put on sunscreen whenever I know my hands are gonna be like constantly in and out of the UV lamp. Although my lamp is an LED lamp. It's like a UV LED lamp, but I don't know. I've heard different, I've heard different opinions about using sunscreen, but I just like, like to prefer to use it. And then I'm just gonna wipe off any excess sunscreen with some rubbing alcohol. By the way, if you see any blue on my neck, it's because I just like kind of like re-dyed my hair because it was getting kind of grayish and like ugly, really like washed out. Um, So let me tell you what I'm planning on doing for these nails and then I will just like get into doing it. I want to do some junk nails. Somebody recommended that I do this in the comments of one of my other videos. I honestly can't remember which one. I cannot keep track of all of them, but thank you. And I wanted to use some poly gel today because I haven't used poly gel in a minute and I'm gonna be using the lazy girl method. I'm gonna be using these extra long coffin tips that I got from, I think it was AliExpress or Timu. And I don't know, since these are like junk nails, I'm kind of just gonna like do them like kind of all over the place, like not cohesive. The only cohesive part about them is going to be the fact that they're gonna be like blue themed. So I grabbed out all of like the sparkly blue poly gel that I could find and we're gonna use them. So I'm just gonna size these out real quick. Oh yeah, but I was gonna tell you guys, so like for my hair, what I've been doing, I've been going for more of like the natural look. Well, obviously like purple isn't natural, but I like how it kind of looks a little bit washed out and not totally super bright. So what I've been doing to re-dye it whenever it starts getting super faded is I mix a tiny bit of the color that I use to dye my hair with a whole bunch of conditioner. And then that gives it kind of like more of the vibrant tint back without it being super, super like ultraviolet. And like my original plan was to experiment as much with my hair as I could before I like grow it out and don't bleach it anymore. That's kind of my goal is to get back to my regular hair color, my natural hair color, which is a dark brown. And I was gonna experiment and use a bunch of different colors, but I've really been liking purple, so I've just been sticking to purple. And honestly, I think I'll probably just end up sticking with purple. So here they all are sized out. I'm actually gonna grab my press-on stand one moment. All right, so I'm back and I've got them all on press-on stands now. I'm just gonna start by prepping all of these with my acid-free primer. I'm probably going to be very scattered in this video because first of all, it's the first time that I have to pay attention to two cameras at the same time. And also I kind of just wanted this video to be kind of more like a chill video. It's the title. It's Cause sometimes I just kind of feel like sitting down and doing my nails and talking to you guys, but I know that not everyone prefers all of my talking in my comments about things not related to nails but I figured this would be just like a fun type of video to make whenever I just feel like kind of hanging out with you guys and doing my nails nothing crazy nothing too fancy just hanging out just hanging out like old pals so I took out my glitters because I think I want to put some glitters in these too because I just want them to be like the most that they can be because they're supposed to be like junk nails right like there's got to be a lot of junk in them so I'm thinking maybe these like um, iridescent star ones and these blue star ones could look really cool. You know, I might end up being wrong, but we're gonna do it anyway. So I'm gonna need to put a base coat on all of these anyway on the inside so that the poly gel actually sticks to it. So I'm just gonna also like stick in some glitters. It's like a nice thick base coat. Okay, story time. So my family, we had like this SUV. Literally my mom drove me to elementary school in it. It's an 
old car and it had just like broken down, the battery broke. There was like a myriad of problems with it. It basically just sat in front of our house, just existing because no one wanted to deal with it and it wasn't needed anymore. But recently my dad went to work on it and he opened the engine compartment and there was a huge rat's nest inside of the engine compartment. Like I've actually never seen a rat's nest before. To be honest, I didn't even know rat's nests were like a thing. I just thought that like, that was something funny that people said when like your hair looked messy, like bro, your hair looks like a rat's nest. Like I low key didn't think they actually existed. They existed because there was a giant one in the engine compartment of this car, bro. But anyway, so my dad found this rat's nest and he literally made eye contact contact with the rat that was living in the nest. He said it was huge. My dad, being a dad, was like, I'm gonna catch this rat. So he set up his trap and he caught the rat. And she was actually so cute, but low-key really fat. Like she was a fat rat, bro. Like the nest that she had built was full of olives from our olive trees because our backyard has a lot of olive trees in it. So I think that she had literally just been sitting in there feasting on olives lives for like probably a couple of months. She was just like on easy mode, bro. Like just eating olives, living the good life. She was like a high class rat. So my dad caught her and he caught her in this little cage specifically for catching rats. And we saw her and we like felt so bad for her. If you saw this rat, you'd probably think that it's a chinchilla. So we have this chinchilla rat and I felt so bad for her and we didn't know what to do with her. So I went and got some pumpkin seeds and I gave some to her like through the cage. I didn't touch her because I no rats probably have diseases. I just like sprinkled some in the cage and it was so cute. She was eating them. Like she had them. She was holding them like in her little paws. I don't know. Do you call rats? Like do they have paws or do they have hands? Like I don't even know. Do they have thumbs? Like I feel like rats have thumbs because she was like holding it and it was so cute. But anyway, so we gave her food and we put her cage by some water because luckily it had rained recently. Like it never rains in San Diego, but it had rained. So we put her cage like by a puddle of water Water, where like part of her cage was in the puddle of water so she could get water if she was thirsty. We decided that we were gonna release her somewhere away from our house. So conveniently, there's like this little area at the end of my neighborhood where it's kind of like just like a little trail, kind of like a reserve of some sort or something like that. So we drove all the way up there with her in her little cage. We put her in a box and we felt really bad because we felt bad for like taking her away for her nest that she had so conveniently built in our car, but it just had to be done. We couldn't like have a rat living in our car. Mm. <laughs> but we felt bad about it and my dad was like joking that I was like gonna go back out in the middle of the night and like bring her back to our car but we released her and it was so cute because I felt so bad we released her and she like didn't want to go she was just like sitting in her cage and then she slowly started to come out of her cage then eventually she came all the way out of her cage and she just like sat on the dirt and like wasn't leaving and it was so cute and my dad found some water in the car and and we gave it to her. But like at the end of the day, it's a rat. And you know, I love all animals. Like I love that rat, but she is supposed to be in the wild. She's meant to be in the wild. Like we couldn't have her living in our car. <laughs> and I'm sure that she is doing fine. But yeah, that experience with that cute rat um, changed my view of rats forever. I never thought of rats as being cute, but yeah. Anyway, that's the story of how I came to love rats. Hope you enjoyed. I just realized that all of these little glitters could possibly cause the poly gel to not fully cure. Well, I really hope that's not the case. Um, I guess we'll find out. So I fully cured this for a full 60 seconds and now I'm gonna start putting on the poly gel. So for my like slip solution, I'm gonna be using 91% alcohol and I just have that in this little pump dish over here. And I'm gonna be using this rosin poly gel brush, which is pretty frayed, but you know, we'll make do with it because my other one is super crusty. So yeah, I think I'm gonna start off with this like glittery one. Definitely forgot how hard it is to push poly gel out of the tubes. So much fun. Ooh, but this one is so pretty. <gasps> See that? I love this one. Mm, yes, poly gel is quite fun. I like patting it around. This poly gel is so easy to work with. Oh my goodness. I remember I got it from Timu. And I'm gonna have to grab me some more Timu poly gel. This, this stuff is nice. 
That is so pretty. I low-key want to use that poly gel for all of them now. Anyway, before I forget, I need to put a base coat on this thumb. I'm deciding to like prep them and put the base coat on one at a, one at a time so that the other ones don't get super linty and gross. So just gonna start with my dehydrator and then go straight in with my Jello Jello. Also, um, y'all are amazing with your comments because you guys seem to like mention things in the comments like at the perfect timing because I was literally just taking off my last set today after I posted my opal nails video and one of you guys commented that you prefer to use the McCart nail glue remover instead of the one kill gel remover for the jello jello peel off base coat because otherwise you need like so much of the jello jello peel off base coat and it's actually crazy because I was taking off that last set and thinking like, bro, I'm already going to need to buy another one of these one kill gel removers and I'm still on my first bottle of Jello Jello. And then I opened my comments and I saw that comment and I was like, I love you. I'm going to need to buy myself some of that McCart nail glue remover stuff. All right, perfect. So that was a minute. And now I'm going to take this guy off and stick them on. That is so cute. What? Bro, I'm like I'm I'm obsessed with this. I am obsessed with this. Somebody help me. Somebody call 911. Am I gonna get demonetized for that? Okay, I think that's good. So I'm gonna flash cure it before I fully cure it, just so like it doesn't move around in my lamp. And now I'm gonna pop it in my lamp to cure for a full minute. The only thing with like this method is there is a lot of curing involved. And I'm actually also going to give it another 30 seconds from the bottom as well. Okay, that feels solid and super strong to me. So I think that it cured just fine, even with the glitters. And I think we can move on. But first I'm actually going to like wipe off the underside of it because poly gel be sticky. And I don't like sticky stuff. Although part of me wants to use this one for all of them, I think I'm gonna go in with this purplish blue glittery one from Rosalind. Let's see what else is going on with me. Those of you guys who don't know, I have a dog. Uh, he's only two years old. He just turned two years old last October. So I consider him a puppy still. And he has a lot of anxiety. He gets really anxious when people he doesn't know come over or people walk by while he's outside or when we go for walks, he gets super anxious whenever we come across somebody with another dog. He never really barks at people. Every now and then there might be someone who he's like extra wary of for some reason. And I'm always like, that boy's sus. Like Dexter knows something that I don't. But anyway, so he gets really anxious and I kind of recently have been wanting to channel his energy into training because honestly, like I'll admit it, he's like not very trained. Like obviously he's trained the basic things. He can sit, he can go to the bathroom. Like obviously he's house trained and all that stuff. But um, I don't like train him to do like special tricks and stuff usually or like all of that other fancy stuff that people train their dogs. But I decided that that might be a good way to, I don't know, like help him focus on something other than his like anxiety. And obviously I take him for walks every day. Sometimes he goes on two walks a day, but he has a lot of energy. I actually found this really cute like training manual in like the for sale section at Barnes and Nobles. And I decided to buy it for him and I've been training him and he is so cute. It makes me so happy when he does things correctly and stuff. One tip that I definitely learned from the training manual that I wasn't aware of before is that you shouldn't train your dog for longer than they are like enjoying it. So like if you train them for too long and you let them get bored of the training, then they won't like training. And I was like, wow, that makes so much sense, but I never thought about it like that. So yeah.
there's that one. Honestly, not my favorite, but I think I can make do with it. Okay, so for the next one, I'm actually gonna go back in with this clear hollowy one because it's so pretty and I love it so much. I think I'd probably be a lot more talkative right now if I decided to drink a coffee but it's like eight o'clock at night and you know what I decided that I'm going to try to fix my sleep schedule and recently I've been drinking a lot of caffeine and feeling like really anxious and nervous and jittery like you know that feeling of like dread and just like panic even though there's literally nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, that's the feeling that I get. It feels like a pulling in your chest almost. And I feel like it's because I've been drinking a lot of caffeine. So I decided to just drink water. So that's probably why I'm a little bit more calm than usual and not very talkative. Plus, I probably shouldn't talk through the entire thing anyway, otherwise y'all are gonna be here for a long time listening to me blab on and on, to be honest. Okay, I found this poly gel and like look at how much it matches my background. Like that's kind of crazy. I think that's a sign. I'm definitely going to use it. Even though it's not necessarily like blue, it's definitely got that blue reflect. So I think it t totally counts. Something else that I've been really into recently, like the past couple of days, the past week, is making bracelets again. But I get in like different types of moods of making bracelets. Like sometimes I'm more in like a charm bracelet type of mood and I've made a couple charm bracelet videos. Actually, no, I've only made one charm bracelet video, but um, sometimes I get more into like a gemstone beaded bracelet type of mood and I've also made a tutorial for how I do those but I've been wanting to make a lot of those recently and there's this really epic bead store that I live by. They are like a crazy store like they have all different types of gemstone beads and they have all different types of gemstones like really pretty rocks and honestly like I'm obsessed with rocks like I used to be obsessed with rocks when I was in elementary school and I'm still obsessed with rocks I'm like a rock girl in my heart so I was actually wearing all of my gemstone bracelets but I had to take them off because they were making too much noise against the table while I was working but yeah, I know that a few of you guys enjoy when I make the bracelet videos um, even, and I know that I love making them. So even though I know that they don't do super well on my channel, I still love to do them for those of you who do love watching them and for myself because I love doing them. But I've been wanting to do a video where I um, like take you guys with me to that bead store slash gem store and then like use the stuff that I buy to make some like jewelry, whether it's like bracelets or wire wrapping stones or whatever. So hopefully those of you who like bracelet videos could be excited for that. And if you don't like bracelet videos and you're just sad that there's not gonna be a bracelet video instead of a nail video, I am sorry. I still love you though. And I'll never stop the nail videos, so just know that. Okay, I know that these are gonna end up definitely not looking cohesive like at all, but I want to use this super glittery, glittery, hollow blue poly gel that I have. So I'm going to use it because you know what? I think that just like these are just kind of beyond, you know, 
what is up with this poly gel i feel like oh no <gasps> I think this poly gel, all the glitter sank to the bottom and it just looks like really clear. Cause that, uh, hmm. I think it'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. But I do think that all the glitter sank to the bottom on this one. It does feel very hard down there. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, even though these poly gels low key don't really go together, I think that it Hopefully it will look good when I put all the charms and stuff on because hopefully it just makes them look like really cool junk nails. So yeah. Also definitely suggest in the comments what kind of nails or what videos you guys want to see from me because I'm not, to be honest, I'm not really good at keeping up with like trends. I try to stay off of TikTok and Instagram, which I think kind of, you know, doesn't help that keeping up with trends thing but honestly for me it's like worth it because at that point like my mental health is more important than keeping up with trends for me at the moment but like definitely um if there's like something specific that you want to see from me a uh, comment in the comments because I see all of your comments usually I don't know sometimes YouTube is weird and it'll like some of your comments will like disappear and then you'll say like yo like where's my comment and I'm like I don't know. I think that um, YouTube has pretty like strict comment um, like control or whatever. But yeah, I'm always open to suggestions. So definitely suggest things down in the comments and definitely like and share the videos that you do enjoy me making because then I know to make more of them because those videos will do better. Although like in the case of the bracelet videos, I will still make some of the videos that don't do very well if it's something that I personally really love. Because my whole thing is like, I just wanna share what I love with you guys. Like hobbies just like are so important to me, honestly. They're so important to me um, because they make me so happy. And when I was little, I would get really, really bored. Um, I grew up with undiagnosed uh, ADHD and just got diagnosed like in the past year So I would get really 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 bored and like throw tantrums But my mom would always like try to uh, Give me like hobbies to do and that's why I just like became so obsessed with like DIYing and like doing hobbies and art and like Honestly, I've tried like all the hobbies out there But yeah, so that's why I love uh, sharing sharing like my favorite hobbies and favorite things and DIYs because like if I love it I'm gonna share it with you guys because I want you guys to like know about it too. Oh my god did I cure the base coat? Bro I don't even know if I cured the base coat but um I'm sure it's fine. This is pretty clear anyway so if I didn't cure the base coat I might just end up having to file it off but that's fine. At least I know it will fully cure because the poly gel is clear. So it's all right. Okay, so here is how they look all fully cured. I gave them a full 60 second cure again from the top and another 30 second cure from the bottom as well, just because I like to be extra careful. So now I'm definitely gonna file these up around the cuticles using my e-file and a bit also on the free edge using my wooden file, but I'm gonna do that without the face cam, without talking, cause ain't no way nobody wants to hear me talking over a e-file and a dust collector. So y'all probably need a break from me talking anyway. So I'm gonna leave you with some nice music and the beautiful sight of me filing these nails. And I will be back after they're all filed up.
so here they are all filed up. There was so much filing to be done that it took me through the entire night, you guys. So yeah, I need, really need to work on that. I'm just kidding. I actually just went to sleep because I was tired. Anyway, so they're all filed up now. Obviously, it's the next day I got tired. And I figured that I want to put my full effort into making these look cute. So I figured that I would just go to sleep and now we're back. Now that they're all filed, they're looking so good. I feel like I really like them. So I went through all of my charms and stuff and just got out a bunch of random different like little pink and blue and white charms. I'm just going to pour them out onto my desk so that like I can actually see all of them. And I'm just going to start going in with these and making them look fun like junk nails. I figured that like the pink and white would look cute with the blue. So yeah, I have my coffee. I am trying to stop drinking monsters starting today. I know there's a monster back there. Don't mind that. That was from a while ago. So I'm just gonna wipe these off with some alcohol and then put a base coat on. Ooh, but actually before I put a base coat, I kind of wanted to try to put like a piercing in one of these. Basically just putting like a hole and then putting a little jump ring in it with a little bead. I think that would look really cute. And I've seen that done on a lot of different junk nails that I saw like on Pinterest. So I think I'm actually gonna try to do that real quick because I don't really wanna drill through when there's base coat on. So I've got my e-file and I think I'll just use like one of these like really sharp bits. I don't want to make the hole too big, just big enough to fit a little jump ring through there. Okay, I think I'm gonna do it like at the very end of this one, like in the corner up here. And I'm just gonna start with one and then if I really like it, then I might do a second one. Right, so we've got that little hole in there now and there's a bunch of little nail dust stuck in there so I'm actually gonna take it's like an air duster and you use it for like your keyboard or like your computer or something and I'm gonna blow in there and try to get all the little dust out with this because I don't want there to be dust in the gel okay that should be good enough so I have all of these jump rings that I bought from Timu a while back and I'm just gonna take one of them out. I definitely don't wanna go too big with this. I think this one should be perfect. So I'm gonna open it. I could just stick it on my nail like this. Okay, yeah, so it would be like stuck on like that. But I think I want to put a little like sea bead in it, if you know what I mean. So actually, I wasn't prepared. Let me go grab a bead. So I've got some beads and we've got a few different options. So I was thinking maybe one of these turquoise ones or the blue or maybe just one of these iridescent ones. I think I like these iridescent ones. These ones are so pretty. So I'm just gonna grab one of those. Okay, now for the kind of sort of hard part to put it on. So there's the bead on there. And now I've just gotta figure out how to put it on my nail. Yeah, see, that's why that's why it was the hard part because I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Where'd my bead go? Okay, let's try this again. No! Oh, like once it's in there, closing it back up is so hard. Okay, one second. I'm gonna take away the face cam. And I'm gonna do this. I think that's definitely, that, that's definitely as good as it's gonna get. And you know what? Let's see. No, it's not that bad. I think that it's pretty cute. I think that it's all right. Do you think I should put another one? I feel like it might get annoying while I'm typing. I feel like I need another one. So I'm gonna put another one real quick and I'm gonna put the base coat on. All right, so now I'm just gonna start putting all the charms and like the rhinestones. I'm also gonna use a few like letter beads um, and just like 
make these look really cute, but like just really chunky and like just full of junk, but like good junk because I want these to be like kawaii junk nails. So yeah, we're just gonna like speed through that. I'm not gonna explain everything that I'm putting on my nails because I could explain every single charm why I'm, I am placing it where I am in detail and then y'all would be here for a very long time. So let's do that. And to put these charms on, I'm using my McCart rhinestone glue. I definitely need to get more of this soon because I love this stuff. Okay, so here they are with all of the charms. Bro, I love these so much. They're so cute. Oh my goodness. If I hadn't used the glitter poly gel, I would go back in with like rhinestones and little tiny hearts and like fill in like all the gaps where I could. But since I did use the glitter in the poly gel and stuff, I don't want to like completely cover up all of the glitter that I have. So I'm actually just going to call these good and go in with a nice shiny glossy top coat. Also, if you're doing nails like this and you're worried about them catching on things, like with all those huge charms, I would definitely recommend um, going in and filling in the gaps between the nail and some of the really large chunky charms with more rhinestone glue gel, just to kind of minimize the amount of space and catching on things, snatching. Since this is is my left hand and I'm feeling a bit lazy right now. I'm going to skip doing that. I am going to um, top coat all of the charms. If they do start causing me a lot of trouble, I will go back in later and fill in the gaps. Right, so here they are. Here are my kawaii junk nails all finished. I think they turned out so cute. I love them. I love them so much. I actually did end up also top coating these little piercings over here just because I didn't want them really to be moving around a lot. I thought that that might get in the way when I'm trying to type and do stuff, but I still think that it looks really cute like that. Anyway, you guys will have to let me know what you thought about these nails and what you thought about this kind of like more chill chatty video format definitely give this video a like if you enjoyed it but yeah leave your thoughts down below on what you thought about these nails i love talking to you guys in the comments thank you so much for watching and listening to me ramble on and on and be all over the place i love you i hope that you're having the most beautiful amazing week and i will hopefully see you guys in the next one also don't forget to subscribe all right Bye, cutie. Mwah.